Hello, my name is Anna Matichuk, and I am the creator of Spring Tide, which is a part of Ocean Fest's 2021 art exhibition. So I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself and my artwork and show you some examples of my work. Um, before we get started, though, I just want to take a minute to thank Rosemary and Lisa and Gabriel and everybody at Ocean Fest who has been so helpful and have made this possible. I'm really excited to share my work with you today. I'd like to tell you a little bit about my background. So this is me when I was six on the West Coast um, with some kelp that I found. Uh, I always had an interest in the life sciences in particular. My parents were scientists and educators. So I spent a lot of my summers kind of exploring the outdoors along with them, lots of camping excursions and things like that. I was very lucky in that way. And they really instilled a love of nature, um, you know, plants and animals especially. So I grew up in Missouri, and um, so I, but I did get to travel a lot around the U.S. and that really had a, a really large impact on my artwork in my both my my younger years and my adult years. Um, something else that was a big part of of you know my my practice, I guess, as an artist is the, the fact that I have learning disabilities and ADHD, and I'll talk a little bit about that later, but um, you know, I, I always kind of struggled with, with school and um, art was something that was kind of an outlet for me. And it was something that I really enjoyed. And so it was always kind of my escape. And I think that shows up a lot in my artwork today, um, just as it did when I was a kid. And I was lucky enough that I was able to turn my love of art and nature into a career, you know, as an interdisciplinary artist, um, also an educator. I got my bachelor's of art education from Maryville University and my master's of fine art from Boise State University. So along with being a working artist, I'm also currently working as a professor of art at Otero Junior College in La Junta, Colorado. And you know, art and education are um, really my, my passion. And I'd say the, the life sciences are right along with that. And I kind of feel like they go hand in hand in a lot of ways. And probably a lot of that was my upbringing and the fact that my parents were scientists. Um, but I feel like the, the arts and the sciences really do have more connections than we realize. So let me show you some of my past works and tell you a little bit more about them. So, you know, really as I was growing up and kind of developing my practice as an artist, I spent a lot of time working on the more of the traditional medias of, you know, drawing and painting, things like that. Um, so these are some works that I did um, not too long ago. It's the series called Birds of Missouri. And these are some mixed media drawings. They also have a little bit of of acrylic paint in the mix here as well. But for the most part, it's ink and colored pencil. Uh, there's a tiny bit of watercolor. And these are based on birds that live in Missouri and that I was accustomed to seeing in my backyard as I was growing up. So kind of revisiting the flora and fauna that I always enjoyed watching. I love bird watching and um, you know, pretty much any type of wildlife is, I just find them very fascinating and beautiful. And so a lot of my artworks are investigating you know, different creatures that I can just see out my window or see on, on little day trips and vacations and things like that. This work, Bird's Eye View, is their little oil paintings made on pieces of birch, little sections that, of a branch that were cut. And for this work, I was inspired by all the different birds that I was seeing over the summer. Um, my husband and I took a trip kind of throughout the, the West Coast and um, were really able to, to do a lot of interesting stuff where we could you know, go out into the environment and and just you know, see what we could find. And so I brought my binoculars and 
would find myself looking at birds and finding them frequently looking back at me. And so that was kind of what inspired this piece that sort of looking through to, you know, that, that moment of contact, you know, between their eye and yours. And those types of moments are what I really love about the, you know, the natural world and what really does inspire me for my artwork. You know, those, those moments of memory and those little, little sections of, of life that you just kind of come across. The, the, the beautiful colors and textures that you find in nature have always inspired me in my artwork. A lot of my, my drawings and paintings are, you know, based on the, the kind of the reality that you'll find in, you know, the, the natural habitat. Um, a lot of times they're also based on, on sort of my memory or a feeling, something that's maybe a little bit more ephemeral. And so works like this are kind of a blending of my interest in, you know, the reality, but also kind of the abstraction of the, the blurring effect that happens, you know, when you go back into the studio after being out collecting specimens and just, you know, spending the day and those little pieces that sort of stick with you in, in memories of that moment in time and that experience. That memory and experience is a really big part of my work. And so these, these biological based studies that I've done are are all sort of based on those types of experiences. So going out and sort of exploring the environment, finding little pieces of lichen or you know, different little fungus pieces, um, some interesting creatures in tide pools, and then going back and, and taking those, those moments and memories and converting them into, into a work that sort of encapsulates that moment. So, you know, a lot of my works are based on reality to some degree, but a lot of times I also like to leave it up to some, you know, kind of spontaneity and um, let it be a little bit more free flowing. You know, I've studied a lot of the patterns and shapes that are repetitive in nature, things like tree branches and rivers. I'm looking at everything from the microscopic up to, you know, satellite images of the earth and the the fractals and the patterns and the things that you find throughout nature, I think are really beautiful and fascinating. So I, I try to incorporate those and sort of mimic them and also, you know, just kind of let it free flow and form as I work many times. So this piece is a public art piece that is in Boise, Idaho called Garden Dreams. And again, this is showing, you know, stuff that is, is rooted in reality to some degree, but I've kind of taken it into, kind of pushed it beyond what you would actually see in nature. It still is based on natural forms and shapes and colors, but it's taken to that, you know, that unreality or that little space beyond and um, kind of just played it up to the extreme to make it really pop. So while I was in grad school, I really started experimenting with materials. And you know, I started to move away from more of the traditional drawing and painting and trying to find ways where I could you know, incorporate other materials and things that were a little bit more um, non-traditional. And so this little accordion book that's in a test tube, biological sample number one, is an example of one of these works where I started to experiment with materials. And again, going back to my interest in, in science and that kind of background of growing up with scientists, you know, there are always things like this around, you know, little test tubes and um, petri dishes and things like that. And I spent so much time in, you know, science labs and that was just kind of my normal and um, it was really enjoyable for me. So, having those types of things around was was something that I was completely used to and comfortable with. And so really when it came to looking for materials for these projects, I of course went back to the scientific materials and started incorporating those into my pieces. Which leads me into some of my other past works, which are more experimental 
media and materials. Um, in particular, I've been interested in fibers and video art, um, but really anything that is a mixture of, of things that are a little bit more unexpected um, really draws me in. I love experimenting and really having a playful approach to my work. I try not to plan things out too much, especially when it comes to works like this. So this is crocheted fibers. Um, I like to let it kind of grow organically, almost like it kind of takes on a life of its own as I work on it. And as far as my, my crocheting craft goes, you know, I am pretty much self-taught as far as crochet. The patterns never made any sense to me. Um, you know, they, it's basically just gibberish. So I, I really kind of taught myself how to, to do a lot of different shapes and um, different types of stitch. And I also started experimenting more with materials and figuring out ways that I could combine them and you know, even different textures of yarn and things like that and how the, the colors and the, the thickness or you know, thinness of the yarn would play off of one another, whether it's more synthetic or a blend or something like wool or cotton, whether it was dyeable or you know, something that was more of a stable color, all of those things really interest me and became a really big focal point of my practice. So of course, with my interest in the natural world, I was looking to, to nature for a lot of my inspiration. And you know, because I, I love to travel and I'm always looking for excuses to go out and look at things like tide pools and see what I can find there. I started making crocheted pieces that would be displayable in the environment, something that would, you know, was based on my memory of that place and something that I could then bring back to the place and put into the environment. I also started working with a bunch of other materials at this point, lots of different types of fibers and also other like found objects. So I mentioned the test tubes earlier, the petri dishes, um, other things that I would find on, you know, beach walks and, and um, you know, on hikes around our place, you know, things like, like bird feathers and shells, pieces of bark, um, just little things that I would find on the ground and that would just kind of catch my eye and I'd pick them up and bring them home with me and set them aside and eventually find somewhere to put them in an art piece. So as you can see, the little shell pieces and the bark and the Petri dish up above there. Some sea salt, pretty much anything that would have an interesting texture that I could add into the paint, and try to give it that, that look of, of really, you know, growing and, and changing. So this piece, light behavior is, a cotton yarn that I dyed and cotton fabric that I dyed to make the monarchs. And then I screen printed the butterflies, the, the black for their wings, and they're all hand cut. And the little dots of white on the wings are white fabric paint that were painted on. So each one is an individual and unique. And I've always loved monarchs and I've always wanted to go to watch the monarchs as they go into Mexico and um, all gather together on, on the pine branches. And so that was what really inspired this piece. And just my, my interest in, in the migration of the monarchs, as well as the conservation efforts for the monarch butterfly, because they are, not only are they beautiful, but you know, they're very important to, to the ecosystem. And so this piece was was one of my explorations into you know enjoying the act of of making and working with the colors and the textures from nature, but also you know, thinking about it from an ecological standpoint and you know, trying to to bring some awareness to conservation efforts. Which then brings me to my next series, which was all crochet in the landscape, 
As I touched on a minute ago, I started doing more and more freeform crochet pieces that were based on my you know, experiences in different places. And so then I would take those pieces, um, and many of these experiences originally were from when I was a kid on these trips. And I would take those pieces back to those locations as an adult and put them out in the landscape and take video of them. And I used um, different, a couple different cameras to, to do the documentation. Um, one of my, my favorites was, was using a GoPro camera on a long stick so I could basically hold it up, you know, put it up in the treetops and put it down underneath the water. It was waterproof. And so I have video of underwater with like this piece of kelp that I crocheted and having the, the waves rush over it. And I, I really loved the play of having this, this piece that I had made based on this memory and then coming back to the place and having it kind of come to life in that, that environment. It was really a lot of fun. Got me quite a few <laughs> interesting looks from passerbys, but I just had to tell them, oh, don't worry, I'm an artist. It's okay. This is called Redfish Lake. This piece and the last piece were both made to go in the water and to float. Just temporarily. Redwoods. I had fun with this piece, bringing it to different parts of the redwoods and just trying it out in different locations, seeing how it would blend into the environment, trying it out on different logs and just looking at the, the play of the texture and color again against the natural environment. Salt and smoke. This one was out in the Bonneville Salt Flats area. Also inspired by the color in the water in the upper part of Great Salt Lake around Spiral Jetty. And Yellowstone. This piece, this crocheted piece was based on the prismatic spring. This was one of the harder ones to actually take the video of because if you've been to Yellowstone, you know you have to stay in the path and you can't really do too much exploring up close to the geysers. It just isn't safe. So I had to be a little bit creative with this one, but I was I still had a lot of fun with it and I was excited about the way it turned out. So my MFA thesis is a mixed media fiber installation called Influence. And as I said at the beginning of this presentation, um, I was diagnosed young as someone who has um, a couple different learning disabilities and um, ADHD. And if you have this yourself, or if you know of anybody who does, then you know that you know the the brain is just wired a little bit differently for anybody who who kind of falls on that spectrum of um, neurodivergence. And I actually like the term neurodivergence and the broader spectrum of neurodiversity. I think it's really fascinating. And again, with the life sciences, you know, neuroscience, I think is just so cool. And so my influence thesis piece was based on my interpretation of what the neurons in my brain look like. So these are my, my brain neurons. And I also have video of, of this work and lots of photos documenting it. And um, I, I wanted to show the, the vibrancy and they were flashing with light and color. Uh, I also had it, it, so it was a very interactive piece. People could go up and walk around and kind of be immersed in my brain. And it was, in some ways overwhelming because the colors and textures were so vivid and bold. So I wanted it to both have that enticing feel, but also it's a bit overstimulation, you know, kind of um, a bit of a re repelling too, because 
that's really what it's like to have ADHD. Everything is, is so much and that can be um, beautiful and kaleidoscopic and wonderful in many ways, but it can also be overwhelming and make you almost need to take a step back. And so I wanted to give people the experience of that push and pull of both being drawn in, but also being repelled and finding something, you know, beautiful, but also you know, a little bit disturbing and a little bit ghastly. And so the colors I used were very jarring. The textures again were, you know, a, like over the top as much as I could get them. I used black light and fluorescence and um, glow in the dark paints, all of this so that I could really make the colors as saturated and vivid as I possibly could. And when you were standing within the space and within the work, it really did feel like this tangled web. It was almost like you, you couldn't quite escape it. And sometimes that's what it feels like. So I was trying to show this way of, of what my experience was like, you know, and also the beauty of it, because I really do think that in many ways, you know, having a differently wired brain is something that I'm, you know, I'm very grateful for it. I'm, I think it helps me as an artist and it helps me, you know, kind of think more creatively and think maybe beyond, um, the, the, the more typical um, ways of approaching problems and approaching life. I, I think I just approach things a little bit differently. And I think a lot of times that is, is good. And I think that that's something that I wanted to get across with not only this work, but also my written thesis was that, you know, I wanted to share the fact that, you know, just because we call these things um, you know, disabilities, it's only really disabling when you compare it to the standard, you know, when we have the support and the understanding, then, you know, to really explore and, and um, to be ourselves and do what our brains are, were made to do, we can really do outstanding things and really excel. And, um, and just that there isn't just one right way to be, you know, it's this really broad spectrum. And that stigma of talking about these things, um, you know, I think it's outdated. I think it's, it's time to, to start letting that go and being more open and supportive about it. And that's really what the neurodiversity movement is all about and something that's really dear to my heart. So that is why I wrote my thesis on it. Here's just a couple more examples, just some other stills. So you can see the way that the colors would sort of shift and change in the space. And this all brings me to my most recent project, which is Spring Tide. So this piece was made specifically for Ocean Fest and so the way that I did this, originally it was going to be for last June, but um, then COVID hit and we had to keep postponing things. I'm so glad that we were able to do it this year instead. Um, it did have some challenges. Um, I live in a, you know, a relatively small town and um, and then of course, when COVID hit, I was looking for materials and it was hard to kind of source some of the things and go to some of the places I normally would go to find used materials. And because this whole project was meant to be about conservation, I, I wanted to use you know, recycled materials as much as possible. So normally I'd be going to thrift stores and looking for, for you know, things that I could use from you know, garage sales and you know, stuff like that, but none of those things were happening during COVID. You know, most of the stores were closed, um, you know, traveling around to, you know, bigger cities was, was difficult. Um, and, 
you know, garage sales really weren't happening at all. So there was just a, a lot less availability. So I turned to eBay and found a lot of my source materials there. So what I started doing was I started buying up um, old blankets, different shapes and textures that I thought I could use and repurpose. And I got all those home. These are my, my two dogs who were helping me. You can see they're being very helpful here. And I got all those pieces home and I started taking the blankets apart and putting them back together into the ocean creatures and the, you know, the plants that you see in the final piece. So these are just some examples of as I was working on, you know, taking them apart and repurposing them, putting them back together again. I also ended up dyeing a lot of the yarn. And um, so I would take these pieces apart and then, you know, just kind of gather them together with similar colors and then do a, a big dye bath on my stove um, with writ dye and, and get them to be a little bit closer to some of the natural colors and textures that you would see in the ocean. And I knew that, you know, they weren't going to be like a perfect mimic of reality, but I didn't really feel like that was going to be a problem if they weren't exact. They were close enough to, to give you that, that feel of what it looks like, um, especially in the Pacific Northwest, you know, in the, the tide pools and some of the, the, the lower tide areas and some of the kelp forests, you know, 20, 30 feet underwater, things like that, um, some of the coral reefs, cold water reefs that you will see. And so I was really looking at those like animals and plants that you would see in those locations. I did a lot of research looking at dive photos from the areas and, you know, just trying to find, um, you know, interesting combinations of those colors and textures and then try to mimic those with the materials that I had at hand. So here's just some, some of the pieces that are in progress. And as I was you know, trying out different combinations to see what would work and how I could combine them to make the different creatures. So up at the top, we have some of the kelp leaves after I had cut them out of the blankets and dyed them. And part of one of my sea nettles and some of the, the bottom of the reef are coming together. So another thing that COVID made very difficult is I didn't really have um, any space to, to work aside from my house. Um, for the majority of the last year and a half, it's been, you know, not only hard to source materials, but, you know, having a, a bigger space to work at, it just hasn't really been possible. So I really had to make do with what I had. So here's some kelp. Uh, stalks that were out drying on my my back porch, but yeah, you know, I, I feel like at the end I I made the best of it, and in many ways I feel like it it turned out just as as well as I had hopes, and I'm I'm very happy and excited about it. I really had a, just so much fun, you know, playing with all of these materials and seeing what I could come up with, and you know, thankfully I I had with my husband help with a lot too. He's also an artist and he's, is Robert Matichek. And he, he is um, much more of a traditional artist, does a lot of painting and photography, but he was incredibly helpful. And um, not only in, in just, you know, helping me pull some of this together, but, you know, just with the, the entire process and, and just being very supportive. So I really am grateful to him. My mom is also an amazing, um, amazing quilter and her help and expertise with some of the sewing projects was incredibly helpful. And I really appreciated that as well. You know, I, from the very start, we talked about the project being collaborative and having this, you know, community aspect and having people be able to bring in pieces of, of you know, coral or, I mean, other, other little sea creatures that they had created, um, just little crocheted pieces 
that they wanted to add to the collection. And so, you know, I, I thought that was such a cool idea. And we, we just kind of ran with it and, you know, let it sort of develop in whichever ways it would. So for the ocean waves, I used some really large pieces of cheesecloth. And again, I dyed them. I also added a little bit of paint. I really wanted them to be undulating like waves. So here I was testing out the shape and kind of hanging it up in my living room space. And I wanted the light to be able to filter through it and look like water. So when you look up, it kind of looks like it's moving water waves above your head. So you're really under the water and experiencing the reef and looking at it through like a fish's eye view. So as I got all of these pieces together, I started gathering them into groupings and you know, connecting them in whatever ways seemed like they would you know, kind of be configured. Um, so I was really kind of piecing all the tiny pieces into these larger sections that could then be put together for the final installation. So you know, connecting the kelp pieces and connecting all the little coral pieces and you know little fish pieces and anemones and all of that sort of stuff so that they would you know be be ready to to be hung and um would look like they were really mimicking that that natural you know, vibrancy that you would find in these in these reefs And then once I had those larger pieces, then they were ready to ship. I was so excited when the work was finally up at the Foss Waterway and ready to be installed. I'm so grateful to everybody who was a part of the installation process. You know, Lisa and Gabriel were um, you know, the just hugely instrumental and like just did such a fantastic job with with pulling it all together and and bringing all of my pieces into the space and making them you know come to life and bringing my vision um into that reality i just am very very grateful to you so thank you so much i think the the way it, it all turned up in this space is is um, just what i had in mind and i'm i'm so happy to be a part of this and to be able to you know collaborate with such amazing people so thank you all everybody who was supportive in, in helping me with this process and thank you all for for watching this and i really hope that when you look at the the final work you are able to you know find some inspiration and some enjoyment from it you know i know this last you know, year and a half has been very difficult. And this project was one of the things that brought me joy and really kept me going. And so I hope that that is evident and I hope that it also, you know, brings some, some happiness and enjoyment for anybody who views it. And also, you know, that, that connection and awe of, of looking at something as, as beautiful as you know, the ocean and all the creatures in it and just the really the, the magic of of that environment and how special it is and that's really what i was trying to to capture with this work and i hope that comes across because it really is such an amazing ecosystem and you know very dear to my heart as i'm sure many of you would agree it's just absolutely beautiful so I hope that my work is able to encapsulate, you know, some of that and and bring a little bit of that that awe and inspiration to the viewers. So thank you all so much for watching my presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions or would like to find out more about me, um, here is my website and my contact information.